Hello and welcome back to my channel and it's a process video today so I'm going to be showing you how I made my interpretation of Doctor Who and it's the Tom Baker version from the 70s and 80s so he wears a coat and a hat and an ever so long scarf so yeah it's a bit of a challenge with polymer clay but uh, yeah I think I did okay in the end. I did however have a bit of an issue with the old weather this week though because it was really changeable so I think there is a bit of an issue with lighting on, on some of the footage but you know I think you'll get the idea of how it all comes together so yeah enjoy. So to start I'm just gonna wipe down my work surface as usual just with a wet wipe and then some kitchen roll. It's always good to start with a clean slate and I'll use just a small amount of sacrificial clay just to pick up any debris or fibres that might be hanging around. So I'm going to start with Doctor Who's head or Tom Baker's head. Just try and fashion that into a likeness. I always try and start with the head of a model really because I like to have a kind of sense of where the project direction's going really. So controversially I'm not a huge fan of Doctor Who in that um, well, I say I'm not a huge fan I, I'm kind of ambivalent really because I've not seen a huge amount of them. I just chose this interpretation of Doctor Who just really because I, I remember it from my youth really. I think whenever I think of Doctor Who I'll always conjure up the Tom Baker version in my head so I guess that's kind of similar for everybody really. We all kind of choose our, our favourites really even if we're kind of not consciously aware of it I guess. So yeah it's always Tom Baker's interpretation for me. And I, you know, I really love his outfit as well, so I think that's why I felt kind of super inspired really to, to make this model. And you know, Tom Baker's just incredible as an actor, so yeah, I just thought I'd, uh, I'd give this one a, a whirl. So I'm just going to move on to the base now, and I think I'm just going to keep it sort of fairly simple, just in white. And I'll create just a very basic pair of shoes for him. I'd be really interested to hear what characters you'd like to see given the clay disarray treatments at some points. I'm always kind of looking for inspiration really so as you've probably guessed by my channel I'm a, a big fan of pop culture so I try and reflect that in my work really. I tend to where possible as well try and make illustrations with my little creations so I suspect I'll be making an illustration with the, my interpretation of Doctor Who at some points as well. If you're new to my channel, I'm a polymer clay artist and illustrator and I make weekly videos, well twice weekly recently actually, but I try and commit myself just to sort of a minimum of, of one a week really and yeah they're just about my polymer clay sculptures, I've got some uh, process videos, some tutorials in there along with the occasional vlog or artist advice video that kind of stuff so if you like what you see and you're interested in polymer clay by all means go and hit the subscribe button and remember to hit the bell for notifications as well. So now I can start constructing the model so I'll add the body to the, uh, the legs like so. Now if you've watched any of my recent videos you'll know that I've um, 
been a bit worried recently about my models getting basically too tall actually because I've had to use the, the main oven recently which you know I don't really want to do because I, I you know I don't know how reliable it is really in terms of polymer clay baking so I'm trying to work on a, a smaller scale so I've just got Jabadi G here as a bit of reference really which is kind of useful and particularly because this model will need to wear a hat as well I really really don't want it to get too tall so we'll see how it goes really I don't know if I've got 100% likeness going on on this model but I think that once all the elements are on there you'll be able to tell who it is really. It's just part and parcel of the way that I work really because I, I work with colours polymer clay it's a case of adding elements as I go along so I can't go back and correct anything which is uh, yeah a bit unfortunate really because I, I tend to bake my models a few times during the process so I just have to basically hope for the best as I go on and you know sometimes it works sometimes it's not quite what I want but uh, yeah it's I think it'll be fine I'm just going to move on to his coat now which should hopefully uh, help it on its way as a model really this can be a, a fiddly process really because it's very much like being a tailor in many ways because you kind of have to pair away at the sizing really but you know my process videos aren't tutorials they're just really an idea of how my models come together if you're interested in the tools that I use I've got a, a list of uh, of tools down in the description so by all means go and check those out they are affiliate links so I basically get a, a tiny commission if you choose to purchase those so yeah by all means go and take a look and his arms are all done so they deserve a clap I think <laughs> So now I'm going to move on to the scarf, which I think is basically the most iconic parts of his outfit really. I'm sure you'll agree if you know of Tom Baker's uh, interpretation of, of Doctor Who. So it's really just a, a case of, um, it's almost like building blocks really, just in, in flat form. So, uh, yeah, just adding kind of lines of colour together in the first instance anyway. So I've got a series of um, kind of neutral tones here that reflect the colours that I've seen in his scarf. So now I'm happy with um, the placement of the colours, I'm just going to go over with my acrylic roller. Fairly firmly actually because I want to ensure that the clay is all sticking together well. And with my blade cutting tool I'm just going to cut that down. And hopefully it should all stick together. Let's see. Yep, I've done an okay job. And I have to still be quite careful with it because it will come apart quite easily if I handle it too much. So yeah, it's all about trying to avoid the pieces uh, falling apart really before I can place it on the model. So that's one side done, I can move on to the other and it's actually quite an enjoyable process making stripey stuff. It's just a bit fiddly really but you know I think it always looks quite impressive when it's done. So 
So now I can start adding his, uh, his hair. And I tried a few different styles actually, um, because his hair's really quite curly. So it took me, yeah, a little while to arrive at a style that I felt quite happy with. So yeah, I'm just gonna build up a, a curly mop of hair. But I need to remember that he's gonna be wearing a hat as well. So I'm pretty happy with that, so I can move on to his uh, his hat now, which I think is a fedora. And hats can be really quite fiddly to make, actually. I know they look really sort of simple in their design, but it can be quite difficult to arrive at something that looks fairly convincing and not sort of a lump of clay just popped onto a circle, really. Yeah, it just takes a while to kind of finesse them into something that, uh, you know, resembles a hat, really. So I'm just going to add in some more hair here. And I'll just compare him with Jabadi G again. And he's ended up a little taller than I'd hoped, but not as tall as previous models, so I'm doing okay. So here he is, all done, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. Again, I could have nailed the likeness a little better, but as I say, it's not always possible on the models, so as long as I give sort of a good impression of who I want the model to be, that's good enough for me. So but yeah, all in all, I think I've done a pretty good job. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you soon for another video. So. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.